We're at a mindful studio once again, uh, and we have a beautiful energy healer and practitioner, a, uh, a life coach as well, spiritual life coach with us, uh, Jennifer Passavant. <laughs> so thank you so much for being here. Uh, because you are so intuitive, you do have such uh, an awareness that there's something else going on, like mm -hmm. beyond the surface, right? Beyond the veil. Mm -hmm. right um, when do you recall like, what was the earliest memory that you have uh, being aware of that? Um, I'm not sure which happened first, but I used to wake up to having my name called. Oh, okay. And I found out later as an adult that, that that's one of the ways that your angels let you know that they're around. Uh, but as a kid, I would just be like, what, what? And then just fall back to sleep. So you'd be hearing so, your name like... Yeah, they'd be like, th was back it then I was Jenny. So it was like, oh, okay. Jenny. And I'd yeah. wake up. Yeah. because they had said my name so and I also that's kind of what got me sensitive to to energies because I could f I, I would wake up if I felt something okay so I think that was probably my first one and how old were you do you recall it in general <sighs> god maybe maybe four or five I yeah time starting to not yeah it doesn't <laughs> it's, it's unraveling the the, the yeah. concept of time I think for yes. especially people like us and those that are awakening up to what's going on, uh, it becomes less and less of a thing. Mm -hmm. And it's strange to deal with because it's something that feels, you know, fairly new. Yes. So, yeah, I understand that. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, and knowing that it was angels, how were you aware of that? I didn't discover that till I was an adult. Oh, I just okay. thought it was some weird experience that I was having gotcha. that I, and I didn't know if it was normal. I, I just thought, oh, that was weird. Okay. <laughs> I go back to sleep. Naturally passed back out. So, yeah, because yeah. I, I just didn't, I, I didn't know what to make of it. Yeah. Um, and then I'd have, you know, I'd get, uh, I would see things in my room. Um, and then I ultimately had a visitation from uh, ETs when I was about six or seven. Okay. So that was another Visual sort experience. of. Visual mm -hmm. experience. They you were felt like in deeply. my house yeah. and yeah. like, oh yeah, whole nine yards. And thankfully they were, they were benevolent. But, yeah. you know, when you grow up, I, for a long time it was like, was that a dream? Was that real? And then when, you, when I started seeing things on TV about, oh, aliens and yeah. alien abduction and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and it was always negative stuff. Yeah. And so then I got really scared. Like maybe they were just pretending to be good. Maybe they yeah. weren't really good. And so again, it wasn't until I was an adult and I was speaking to someone who channeled and I kind of wanted to see if they were legit or not. And mm -hmm. so I asked them about that experience and they were to give me, they were able to give me just exact detail, but they told me that they were benevolent okay. and that the experience was to help me do live my life's purpose, which at the time I didn't know what it was. Sure. So oh, at that, that age, of, right? Six or seven to that, yeah. 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 And so it was interesting that, that they were helping me do what I'm doing now yeah. and I had no idea. So it was really interesting. That's wild. And that's great. I mean, at such a young age too, having an experience like that, mm -hmm. I, I think that children, they don't know the difference, you know, if, from that. Like when, when mm -hmm. you do any kind of energy work with, with a child, you realize that if you have them doing any kind of imagery, like when I do uh, imagery meditation, it's like what they experience in the meditation is no different from reality here for them. It's exactly. like, no, 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 there's no, and you yes. try to like- And they're right. And exactly, <laughs> they are right. Are like the way that we've been, um, you know, uh, taught over the years, it's like that it shifts for us as we become more of an adult. Yes, you know? and our brain splits into the two hemispheres. Exactly. And, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, and I've always said that too, like with when kids, like when we're, firstborn as infants it's like we know everything yep. like we're even though it, the reason why we react the way that we do <laughs> is because like the pressure of being in physical body is like yes you know, that's you just, so true that's like, so true like oh yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like, here. yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. um it's great too that you mentioned like realizing that hearing um your name being called is like essentially angels and they're like, yeah, reaching out to you. Hey, yeah. we're here. We're here. Yeah. My earliest experience too was with angels, and mm -hmm. but I, I I saw them exactly as angels. I just brought up this story recently to somebody that I was talking with, and uh, they were telling me that I could fly, and this was in in what I understood to be a dream. Sure. Um, and I was like, no, I can't fly. And they're like, I, you've always known how to fly. So it's just funny, like you know, yeah. the angels are always like they're talking to us yes. right away. Yes. And usually we circle back. Yeah. So with what you experienced at that young age, when did it get to a point where you were, or did it ever shift where it wasn't like you were open to this energy? Yeah, it seemed like it, for a while, it it didn't go away, but it slowed down. Like I would have, um, 
I, I remember being visited by less positive things. Oh, okay. And I had a lot of recurring dreams. And right. I realize now that one of the one of the prominent ones was a an attempt to um, how, how shall I put this? Attempt to get me to shift sides. Mm, okay. And I never fell for it. Yeah. Um, how were you aware? Like, could you tell that there was something energetically different? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Because they were trying to fool me and it was like a real dad, fake dad. Oh, wow. And I knew that my real dad was my real dad, which is, of course, the, the, the personification of the, of the light. Mm -hmm. And the fake dad was coming from downstairs. And if so, of course, downstairs is low. Yeah, it's lower, low energy. lower vibration. And lower so energy, it was yeah. sort of, he was he was tempting me to come down and yeah. be with him. And uh, I was like, no, you're not my real dad. That's yeah. my real dad. And I had this dream. God, I can't, I can't even count how many times wow. I had it until they finally, I think, gave up. And then they ramped it up to other, doing other things. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, obviously that failed miserably. <laughs> but good for you to be fully aware. And it's so funny, like, I, I, I've experienced this and my partner now, Nicole, um, as a child, she, I mean, even now, like her, her energy and her brightness, her light is so intense. And I know that from you, from just our few times interacting, it's just like you stand out and you're an attraction for anything that has some sort of ethereal power <laughs> or spiritual power. So they're going to wind up testing you. They're going to wind up seeing what they can do. Yeah. And especially with someone that has the ability to cause incredible change or great transformation on the planet here mm -hmm. that is it's like we're waving this big hey over here without mm -hmm. us even knowing it yes so we're going to be tested so yes. good for you and, being aware and threatened because we are we are a threat and yeah. so there's there's always going to be an occasional attempt to yank our vibration down yep. so that we can't make the positive change that we agreed to make and which is exactly. funny because they know they know that that's a part of the plan they know yep. that's what we're here to do but they try anyway yeah, they still <laughs> they still have to fulfill their role and what contract. they're here doing exactly Absolutely. and we're fulfilling ours so yeah and it's a great honestly i i think a lot of people fear the idea of like the lower vibration and what some people might use the word as like evil things uh -huh. that are out there that mm -hmm. are really just not what Neg we want to associate with. Yeah, negative energies and entities. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, you know, I understand that. But I think it's very, it's a healthier perspective, I think, if you go, hey, it's a challenge and I'm here to meet it. Yes. I can't, like, I'm confident enough in who I am, my power, my ability, my love, mm -hmm. being centered in this space uh, that I can meet that. Yes. And I remember I'll share something for me, uh, what I experienced. And this is more recent, actually. There's been, you know, in all of our lives, mm -hmm. every single person, we're not just the two people, everybody out there. Oh, yeah. We all have these tests, whether we acknowledge them that way or not. Yeah. You know, it's another story, but this was a more recent test, probably about four or five years, four and a half years ago is probably about right. I was in meditation and I was in the upper limits of the Earth's atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And I had a guide with me that was literally holding my hand because I was kind of spooked because I, I saw it and felt it like very it deeply. Was real. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I remember negative energy all around me, like above me and like kind of swooping in because mm -hmm. they saw me up there mm -hmm. with this, you know, incredible light master here. Yes. And I was like, whoa, okay, what are we doing? What are we doing? And he's like, relax, relax. They cannot harm you. Yep. They know what you are. Yes. You have to be aware of what you are. Yes. They and count on you not knowing. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. And that's <laughs> they how, want you to not know. And that's basically what the test was at that moment. It was like, are you going to allow this to infiltrate and have an impact? Or yeah. are you going to be confident in what you are? Yes. And that's what my guide was showing me when I was in the upper atmosphere. And mm -hmm. I was like, whoa, oh. And once I changed and it was like, okay, I trust in the words of my guide, uh -huh. everything else shifted. So. Yeah, that was another learning process that I had to go through, but I went through it um, through uh, attacks. Oh, and okay. I had to learn that, yes, I could call on Archangel Mikael or, mm -hmm. you know, Yeshua or, or whoever all else, and, and they will come and they will do it. But ultimately, it's my divine aspect and me owning and knowing and recognizing that I am an all-powerful being, divine being of divine white light, and nothing and no one can harm me save that which I allow. Yeah. And so that's kind of become a mantra that I try to teach others, but that's one of the things I had to learn, that I can call them for backup, yeah, but yeah. it's my power that, that can help them to, to move away. And the other thing, and I, tell me if this is something that you've recently kind of become more aware of because it's like I think as spiritual beings we we know it 
but we don't often um, remember it consciously mm -hmm. that these negative and lower energies and entities are also aspects of the divine. Oh, totally. They are a part 100%. of the duality, yep. right? Yep. And so for many people that when they um, come in contact with them, they're not only are they feeling fear, but what they're doing is they're empathing the energy of the being because the being is made of fear. Mm -hmm. And so it's not your fear, it's their fear you're feeling, which then will can incite fear in you, which exactly. is part of the plan. Yep. Um, but then it, from there, it makes it challenging to then say, you know, I love you, I forgive you, you are another aspect of me, another aspect of the divine, and I send you peace, love, joy, and forgiveness for the purpose that you're serving for the sake of experiencing duality. And in loving them, not only does it make them go, yeah. and go away, but it actually has an energetic effect on them yep it's a and it creates a ripple effect yeah throughout the whole well everything <laughs> everything that you've said is two like the exact words that you use things that i've heard before things that i've had to use before and things that i've experienced and uh the idea of like you sending love they're like totally icked out by that like, yeah it's <laughs> like the it's like a and it's not meant to be like hey get away from me no. you just say it with purity and they're literally like oh <laughs> That they exactly. have to yeah. they have to move they can't be in that no because it's so pure and it's so true again again like being focused within your heart space there's no harm that can come to you and mm -mm. you always have that power you always have that ability you can call on that like white light if you want to call it that or golden sure. light or blue light whatever it is that resonates for you mm -hmm. um but that's it's absolutely true um i had uh, a really freaky experience in sedona um and it was pure evil mm -hmm. um and the sound was horrible and it was like uh, greeting me mm -hmm. and i was uh it was like half dream state half like that's how as they real as we were right here yes uh, lucid yep it mm -hmm. was so bizarre uh because it was tangible i could feel it i could sense it it was like the ickiest thing and i was in the middle of the woods at night at like one o'clock in the morning uh -huh. there's nowhere i was going yeah you know and when i felt this and heard this, it was a hello that was like so droll and just hung for the longest time in the air. Oh. And it was like half in my tent and half out of the tent. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was icky. <laughs> but what the reason I'm bringing it up is yeah. <laughs> um, to mirror what you were saying, I totally came into my power within the moment. I had a guide, luckily, Mary Magdalene. Oh, that's fantastic. Right in here, she goes, this is it, speak. And I said, I, I honestly, I don't remember the exact words, but mm -hmm. it was very similar to what you said. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I had to do it in all four directions. So I had to do e oh, north, sure. south, east, west. And I just did it from within my tent all the way around. Yeah. And like just the, the feeling of ease that took place after, it was like such a shift from being like, ooh, <laughs> to, oh, wow. Like, mm -hmm. I, look, at, look at how powerful I am. Look at how powerful all of us are. So that's yeah. great. Um, with regards to angels, I'm curious, mm -hmm. as an adult, mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming you work with them on some level mm -hmm. with you. Mm -hmm. And could you give us a little bit of insight with regards to who is very active with you for your energy and the work that you're here to do? Mm -hmm. And uh, what that looks like, how it is that you work with them. Sure. And if there's any messages with regards to what's going on right now that you get from your angels. Yeah, I've, got, I've gotten a, a re repetitive message, but um, mostly I work with a being that I channel regularly and he calls himself Ian and he's of the Seraphim realm. Mm -hmm. um, and he, I did not know I was gonna channel in this lifetime. That was, that came as a great shock to me, mm -hmm. uh, but can He's, you explain what channeling is just for some people they might not know sure i mean channeling can be i mean yeah. everybody is a channel so it mm -hmm. can look like a lot of things it can look like this art this mm -hmm. is channeling it can, it can look like when you get intuitive information and you just relay it yeah. it can look like when a being comes into your body and speaks through your mouth it mm -hmm. can i mean there are various forms but that's the that's the form i'm yep. typically referring to because that's the way he mostly works with me okay aside from him working through my body where we do energy healing together um along with the goddess kuan yin <laughs> Um, what awesome allies to have to help. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. God. And, I, and it's not just them, but they're the ones that, that have made themselves known in terms of like 
a name and actual and, name yeah. yeah and that that I have like regular work with I mean yeah. there have been others that have kind of stepped forward and I just recently channeled um Mother Mary mm. and I because I, I, I channeled her twice and by the second time I was like I gotta know who this is yeah. <laughs> so I asked and yeah, I was like oh holy cow that's kind of cool isn't that funny how some like they don't they don't say like the name isn't as important as just what we have to do together. Yeah, and, yeah. But sometimes because of you know who we are, we're like, no, but who are you? Yeah, <laughs> like, we, yeah, we like a little to bit know more. Stuff. Humans know, like to know. Yeah, exactly. I know your energy is you know good energy, and you're here to help and serve. Yeah, you can tell that right away. Yes, but, it's yeah. for me just sheer curiosity, human curiosity. Um, Too funny. But yeah, he's the one I work with the most. But I, I for a long time, I worked with all of the archangels, okay. um, and you know, called the, called them in through the four directions. Yeah. And so I, I would work with whoever I needed to work with in terms of what it was I was asking for help for. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think Archangel Michael was the prominent one yeah. that I worked with the most. Like his energy was like a hot flash. It was awesome. Like I mean, it still is, but it's just yeah. so good. <laughs> um, Can I ask you with my Archangel Michael? Yeah, because um, he, I have. Have four angels and he's one of them uh, mm-hmm. that I work with. It's not continuous and it's not all the time, but yeah. he'll, he's like the big gun that will come in once in a while, depending on who I'm working with. Yep. Um, I see him all the time as being a ham. Like he is so, just like. Yep. Okay, beautiful. Yes. I just wanted to yeah. get. Yeah. He, he's like a. He, how do you how do you explain? It? He's like Thor, the, <laughs> yeah. the, the Marvel version of Thor, because yep. he is, you know, he presents himself with a very strong energy. Not that he even has a physical body per se, yep. but he presents himself as being very, very strong to represent the, his his spiritual strength. Um, but yes, and, and so beautiful, funny. very. He's very beautiful. Yeah. Uh, but yes, also can be very funny. But you know, I think most of the divine beings that I've encountered most of the divine beings I've encountered have a really amazing sense of humor. Oh, totally. Some yeah. of them just like to stick to the meat and taters and are kind of yeah, kind of serious. Point. Yep, yeah. Yep. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's so funny when you get them and they're like funny. Yeah. <laughs> you don't think they'd be you, like to- Like jokey. have such personality. <laughs> yeah. That's what I, it's funny that you say that because yeah, like when I see Archangel Michael, it's again, not necessarily body, it's like light form, but it's it's, yeah. it's almost like it's not specific. You just get a general idea, and that's more than enough. The yes. feeling kind of overtakes it. Mm-hmm. But visually, I see his face very clearly. Mm-hmm. And he's always like, ha like this big smile, and like, yeah. I'm here, yeah. I know you're happy that I'm here, like that kind yes. of thing. It's yes. just so funny. Yeah, he's got such a great energy. He's yeah. just, and when he needs to crank up the, the, uh, warrior aspect, he, he cranks that aspect up when, when he needs to, but yeah. otherwise, he, you know. Yeah, he's he's got good energy, and I usually see him with like a golden blue yep. light. Blue light. Is that we usually yeah, see? Yeah, I see blue I see light. Like gold, it's like blue with like a gold halo. Okay, around. yeah. That's what I usually see. Yeah. Um, so, but Ian is at, he's a so here's the thing about the angelic realm, and this is I think something that a lot of people, uh, and I don't speak a lot about this, but I'm trying to get. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to be more open about it. Um, I think a lot of people assume that there are angels. And oops, sorry. That's okay. And uh, <laughs> divine, or I should say, high vibrational um, uh, galactic beings, mm-hmm. and that kind of near the twain shall meet. Uh, but really, what I've started to learn, because that that used to be my concept as well, that mm-hmm. you know, there's there's angels and there's ETs. Yeah. But what I've learned is that those beings that we consider angelic are various forms of ETs Mm -hmm. that have ascended. And so they're no longer existing in a physical body, regardless of their mm, star of origin, Mm -hmm. star system of origin. And so for Ian, I discovered that he was, he's an ascended Arcturian. And so when I see him, he's, he, there's no physical body. There's just like a light body Mm -hmm. that looks like, um, it looks crystalline because it's got like it's like rain rainbow sparkles, rainbow glitter, <laughs> uh, almost like when you look at the tips of fiber optic light. Uh-huh. That's I, uh, what his outline looks like, but otherwise he's basically transparent. Yeah. And I had to learn that he was an Arcturian, and it was like, oh, and that was my wake up call of hey, just because they're an, an angel doesn't that doesn't mean that they're not also an et and mm-hmm. that other divine divine being doesn't is not uh, such a finite thing yeah and so it really had to expand uh, cause me to expand my purview of what angels and angelic beings are and now they are here to guide and support our ascension process they're an angelic being yeah i see <laughs> 
And of course, there are different vibrational levels of that, mm-hmm. but they're still that's uh, less uh, divine. I gotta play with. I mean, I totally understand what you're saying, but it's it, it is. It's like it's a it's it's cracking whatever loose definition I've had as well. Yeah. To kind of see how it ends up being, but that's great. To, yeah, it certainly it woke me up. I had no, <laughs> did not consider that as an option until that. So yeah. it's like oh. That's like one of those things. There's you know it's infinite possibility, right? Mm-hmm. Or it's 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 all infinite. There's not really any one specific way. So the things like once we feel like we have something figured out. It's like, okay, that might work for a certain period of time based on where we are in our story. Yeah. But as we continue to uh, expand, things are going to shift. And we, we, we should never hold on to things so tightly. It's always kind of a loose grip. Like, oh, this is working right now. Great. But it could be something completely different depending on how we wind up proceeding. <laughs> yes, exactly. And it's like the, the awareness when we're ready for the next level of, of awareness yeah. comes when our consciousness is ready for it. So as our consciousness expands, our level of awareness meets that yeah and i think that's why there are so many people in the spiritual community who are like no this is right no this is right and it's because they're they're seeing things from their own level of consciousness and perceiving it through their own personal filters and so they haven't wrapped their brains around the possibility that maybe they're both right yeah maybe depending on their level of consciousness and the filter through which they're perceiving perfectly said yeah so you just brought up something that has been so you were, you were asking about uh, things that are going on now and the messages that my guys have now. Yeah. So you just brought one up. Okay. And that is the not holding, not attaching to a belief yeah. so tightly. Yep. Because we're seeing, and of course this is the 2020, mm-hmm. so 2020 vision. So a lot of things are going to come <laughs> yeah, to exactly. light. We're like you mentioned filters. We're like letting go of these filters that we've been seeing through that are adding to the distortion. Oh. And yes. now we're seeing things kind of warping back into a a more clearer perspective. Exactly. What we're also seeing though, and this is a part of that sort of, it's like a energetic, um, like an energetic seesaw because now we're seeing the duality for the duality. Mm -hmm. It, it was, it was like, it was always there, but it wasn't quite as, at least the masses quite as in your, in your face. It was, but they were still, how do I say this? You know, the, you know, the term in this world, be in this world, but not of it. Mm -hmm. Sure. They were very much, um, of the world. And so they were wrapped up in that, in that illusion. And so it wasn't glaring them in the face. But now we're starting to be less in the world and more of it. And it's the duality is becoming like, oh, holy gods, it's everywhere. You see it non like you can't, you can't shy away from it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's difficult to look at it, but you you can't help but see it now. And you have to look at it so that you can see it for what it is and rise above it. But it's between the left versus the right. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, virus, no virus. Yeah, yeah. My truth versus your truth. Yeah. Uh, us Polarity. people versus the government. <laughs> us people versus the elite. Yeah. Um, no matter what it is, it's yeah. a it's a separation. Or even that sort of. I've seen a lot of the savior victim. Oh, sure. Dynamic, which yeah. is still a, a duality separating. Yeah. Um, uh, what's the word? Narrative. Mm-hmm. And I've seen a lot of that, but that is really like it's cranking up on it's it's past 10 now we're at 11 i think on the scale of of duality (laughs) but it's i think it's clearing it it's sort of like it has to come to the surface to to a much greater degree and be much more out in your face and visible in order for us to go wait yeah no 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 no. i'm uh, we're above that yep this is this is for the sake of the illusion that's the purpose that this serves but really i need to operate from a non-dual perspective and see that there is truth in both sides embrace both Both, sides and not attach myself so firmly to one side or the other where I begin to identify with that side. And what I've really seen is a lot of people identifying with a side so much that if someone from another perspective comes and shares their perspective, it feels like a threat to their identity and they attack then the other person. This is what's been going on forever. Yes. But now it's we're like, aware of it. Wee! Now it's oh, like, it's, yeah, we can't look it's away. It's so much more in your face now. And so it's been, the, the, the message that's been coming up l- lately, for the most part, is for people to be mindful of when they're operating, not only within their, sort of like an echo chamber, mm-hmm. where the only information that they're getting is from sources that um, perpetuate their confirmation bias. Mm, sure. And then 
you know, if someone comes with a different perspective, how are you responding? Are you attacking them because you feel like your beliefs are attacked? Yeah. And so you have to tell them that they're wrong, they're full of crap, you know, they're just a leftist, rightist, what, what, you know, whatever yeah, it, it whatever is. it is that you want to label them as. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, is that where you're coming from? Because if it is, then you need to look at the level of attachment you have to your perspective, to your beliefs, and maybe consider opening up your purview to all perspectives yeah. and get out of that echo chamber and release that confirmation bias and be open to all possibilities and not attach yourself to any one, but be like a neutral observer of everything that's going on yeah. and kind of go, well, that that feels right, but I'm not going to hold on to that. Mm -hmm. But that feels right. But this also feels right. So I'm just going to watch and see what happens. Yeah. That's a much more non-dual perspective. I'm sorry, that was a lot. No, but that's that great. You said something that a tremendous, really revealing for the audience in terms of, one, getting confirmation that this is something that's coming through angelic beings through you in terms of a big, important message. Mm -hmm. And I can totally back that up with what I've experienced as well in talking about how do we get there? Because that's a big challenge that I've had to go through in my awakening mm -hmm. is how do we attempt to see all perspective and not want to beat down who we're looking at as being in opposition to what we consider our position. Mm -hmm. One, don't have a position. You know, you want to be strong in who you feel you are, who you know you are, but not at the expense of hurting anyone else around you. Right. So the big thing for me and why I've always been so attracted to the heart, and we're talking about duality, right? The heart is unified. There's no duality there. Mm -hmm. It's one message, one feeling. Mm -hmm. um, and it's no matter who's around you telling you that it's not okay, you're secure in it. Mm -hmm. So I always say you gotta get into your heart space. Yes. When you're up here and you're playing with the, the left-right brain and the, you know, the duality lives up here. Yes, it does. If you wanna take a look at what exists in the world, it's because the majority of humanity has been working from this space. Mm -hmm. It's not wrong, there's nothing wrong with it. it no, just, it serves its purpose. Exactly, it's just doing what it's doing. Yes. And Right now, of course, we're getting this, this information, it's all a matter of we need to be more open to, because we see duality now. It's like, like you said, living in the world, living of it, and being aware of what those differences are. Um, we can't not see these massive like discrepancies. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, what, is it, what, well, what does <laughs> yes. this mean for me? Yeah. And once you go to your heart, you'll be able to look at it in a way that's healthy, not just for you, but for everyone else. Mm -hmm. um, and talking about perspectives and beliefs, I always say, and I, people don't like this, but I, I don't believe in beliefs. Mm -hmm. And that is, you know, kind of like, uh, uh, what would they call that? You know, that's a belief in itself, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. But you know what I mean? Like the idea is like, okay, yeah, fine, play with beliefs, but don't be so hard with them yeah. uh, that you put yourself into a forced position. Forced position doesn't work in where we're going now. Correct. And uh, you're gonna be giving yourself a, a really difficult challenge to meet if you stick within those really tight spaces. Mm -hmm. Don't limit, don't put yourself in a box. Allow yourself to be open to it. Mm -hmm. And one of the big things that I also say to people um, is learning, once you're in your heart space, kind of turning off the ego or at least neutralizing mm -hmm. the ego, so it'll, it'll keep going. Shut up. Yeah. Exactly, it's like, yeah. no, no. <laughs> I'm in control, yeah. but you're fine to chat. If I want to interact with you at points, maybe I will, maybe I won't, but you mm -hmm. don't have the power. I have it right here. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically allowing yourself to go, uh, let me hear what this person has to say. And if it doesn't sit right, like a different type of wine, like, oh, I like this wine and mm -hmm. I'll keep drinking this, but at least let me try this other flavor of wine or sure. this other variety of wine. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> accepting it, even if you don't agree with it, and at some point, humanity is going to wind up being able to embrace all those differences and going, I celebrate those differences because like you said, I think it's so beautiful. All of our perspective, all of, all of our ideas are more of the truth. Mm -hmm. It's not like one is right and one's wrong. It's mm -hmm. always, it's just getting a, a fuller idea of what the real truth is. Exactly. So, so I wanted to ask, uh, with what we're going through now, mm -hmm. with this shift in energy, uh, specifically with... I, I feel like the coronavirus was like, or at least the concept of this virus going around the world um, has been the, the impetus for it. There's been a major shift that everyone's had to feel with as a result of uh, not potentially doing what we used to do. Mm -hmm. 
And it's like, well, what are we doing? Because we're so used to just repetitive business, yes. right? We're in the process of always doing, and we don't really have much time to think about it. Yeah. We just have to kind of, oh, I know this routine. Mm -hmm. I know this process. And then it's like, whoa, everyone stop what you're doing. Yes. And we're being you know, taught that we're supposed to be afraid of, you know, the virus. And sure, that's fine if people want to go there. Mm -hmm. um, but it gives us this like, whoa, okay, what are we doing now? I was curious, what have you been doing as a result of having basically life completely shifted for a little while? <laughs> yeah, well, it was weird for me because my, uh, my initial reaction was a, 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 a out of left field immense sense of peace and joy and it was weird because it didn't fit the scenario yeah, the story <laughs> like, that we were being told yeah but yeah, i'm like yeah. i don't know why but i feel freaking amazing mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like this is great yeah. and as i started to <laughs> learn what the the blessing of of this experience it was like oh now i get why i feel friggin fantastic um but it was such a a juxtaposed feeling to what we're what we're seeing yeah. um but i so for me it was it was just peace and i did experience a, a, an immense <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 shift in like I, I went through a, a further awakening where I you know it was like things that I'd kind of known about like I it was they were kind of in the back of my mind I'd already you know kind of learned a little bit about them then it was like okay so you're familiar with this great all right we're gonna peel the the, the veil completely off and now you're gonna really see what's going on and it was like Whoa. oh and so I had to go through my own like further awakening because of course this is all a process it's not like one day you're just bing yeah, and yeah. you're enlightened um and so it, it's been a process where i contacted a friend of mine and i'm going i think i'm having an identity crisis <laughs> because every there's so many things that i thought i believed and i thought was was what was true and right for me that is now not only being flipped upside down but also inside out and backwards and she she's like i'm going through the same Thing. And so we've been kind of sharing the story of like, uh, we've had our light turned on in terms of, of what's going on and, and why things are, are go happening and the, way and they the, are, the yeah. purpose and, and all that good stuff. But it's, it's, it's been interesting. Yeah, it's <laughs> definitely been a wild ride. Yeah. I, I've, honestly, I, I, you're empathic, of course. Do you have like a switch for it? Like, are you able to like turn it on and off? Or is it like constantly like you're feeling all the time? No, it's well, it depends. Like I can distract myself from it. Oh, okay, sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but I don't, I don't go like, and I'm going to turn it off. Yep, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> it's more of like I get, I get involved in either reading something or I'm, yeah. you know, gardening or you yep. know whatever it is. But focus on something else where me. it kind of like it's it settles a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Got it. Um, the uh, the reason I bring up empath is because uh, I I feel consistently mm -hmm. and. Um, the the feeling that I'm getting now, I had to find out what was going on because it was so heavy for me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, you always feel like, oh yeah, I got things kind of covered, and I've been, you know, I know I know how to create my day each day. I know how to be focused, and you know, based on keeping my body active and mm -hmm. and meditating and so forth, and you know, just doing due diligence and taking care of self to be able to help others. I was hit hard, mm -hmm. you know, probably I guess like mid March. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we were already aware of the virus story, mm -hmm. you know, and how it's progressing throughout the world. But I was like, what the hell am I feeling? I wasn't thinking about the virus, you know. Sure. And I had to dig deep, and it was humanity. I'm feeling what humanity is feeling, and it's yeah. in my gut. Yeah. And it was so heavy, and it's like, I don't like this. Like, I, you know, I thought I had this, the lower chakras essentially kind of taken care of. Mm -hmm. Like, no, 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 you, you do. You're feeling what everyone else is going through right now. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, okay. I said, that helps. But I said, this is not good. I said, how do we work through this? Yeah. He said, keep doing what you do. <laughs> Everyone's waking up. You know, all mm -hmm. of the uh, light workers are doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. Yep. And um, saying like, listen, it's going to feel like a hibernation period and it's going to be beautiful on some level, but you have to remain active. Mm -hmm. So that's it. It's like any little opportunity that, you know, uh, presents itself, 
or things that I can kind of create for myself, mm -hmm. um, I have to be on point and put it out there and yeah. not worried about what it wants, you know, how it resonates, what, how it winds up working, just something that I know is truth for me, I got to put out there. Yes. Um, and by doing it, it, like you were saying, like, I feel so much peace, like, this is great. Once I started doing that, it was like, oh, okay. It was almost like if you don't wind up doing what you're here to do, don't use like this, this time that's available right now just to sit back and like do nothing. Like yes. you really, you're, don't pick you're, your nose and twiddle your thumbs. Exactly. You're yeah. being kicked in your ass right now. Mm -hmm. because you're, that's why you're feeling this. Yeah. It's make sure you keep putting out anything that you know is pure of heart. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And once I started doing that, I was like, oh, okay, thank you. Because this is starting to feel like it's easing up a little bit. Yes. Um, but Well, and you had, you had a, so I had a mini experience of that where I felt this an intense anxiety that I knew was not mine. Not yours, yeah. And um, so I had to, I had to process that through, you know, grounding and, and meditation and deep breathing and things like that. But one of the things that I've learned about being an empath is that we have the gift and sometimes it does not feel like a gift if we... If, if we don't know how to work through it, mm -hmm. um, but of processing the energies and the emotions of others who aren't yet able to healthfully process it. Yeah. And so when we pick up on these things, it's not just so we know how to best respond, although that is one of the gifts of being an empath. I know how to respond to you because I know how you're feeling and I can empathize, yeah, right? Exactly. But it's also to energetically process because we know how to, and I, I we can do it. Yeah. I know I use this phrase is flush the proverbial toilet yeah. in that we know how to pull in the light, flush that energy out and ground it into mother earth to transmute it into something more usable. Yep because so many people don't and when we do that and we're connected to the earth that connects to everybody else on the planet through the the you know the energetic grids of the planet yep. and that us being able to elevate that energy elevates everybody else just that much just more. a little extra more yeah. you know that's perfect yeah, yeah. it's uh, things that i wasn't aware of early on when i was doing ceremonies first starting off mm -hmm. um and i would start crying yeah, and I was like, "What's going on here?" Because I was, I, I, I wasn't the one that was uh, holding space for everyone. Mm -hmm. I was part of it with everyone, mm -hmm. um, and I just started crying nonstop. And when it was all said and done, the people were coming up to me saying, "Thank you so much for doing what you did." I was like, "What did I do? Mm -hmm. You took all of our stuff and you let it out." Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Oh, thank you for." making me aware that's what was going on because I was so in it that yeah. I couldn't tell. Cause they, there was like six people and they're all like, you took it. And they saw me take it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, okay. Now I guess that's what I'm doing. <laughs> but that's when I, that's how I learned. You learn yes. by like, you know, trial by fire. This is true. Yeah. yeah. Like experience and kind of go, what the hell was yeah, that? What was this? What was this? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Playing like with, um, uh, like the inner child for people and mm -hmm. making that connection. That's so important, I think, right now. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I notice when I'm doing sessions. It's like I, I feel their inner child and the emotion comes out through me and, like you said, transmuting mm -hmm. and, and letting it go in a way that's healthy, not just for the person that is going through it, but also uh, elevating everyone else because we're all connected, right? Like Absolutely. you said with the grid, we're all connected. Absolutely. So. <laughs> it's great. Grid or otherwise. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, with, uh, I know you, whether you might label yourself this way or not, I know you to be an incredibly creative person. <laughs> Maybe not with painting necessarily, but in terms of like, think about the energy work, the creativity when recognizing a certain type of frequency and you know immediately how to oh, work with that. So yeah, it, it's true. all, it all, you know, it, it depends, the medium might be different than what we think of in terms of how to be creative, right? Mm -hmm. But you're super creative. And I... I we were talking about duality, left brain and right brain. And I think I might have mentioned that earlier, but in terms of what that means, the right brain is considerably the, the creative sphere mm -hmm. and playing with imagination and the intuition space, mm -hmm. the spiritual space, essentially. Yeah. And the left side is very the analytical, heavy into language, yes. um, very categorical, liking to put things a certain way, unfolding things in a very logical way. Yes. Um, and I was just curious, especially with, you know, knowing these messages in terms of uh, duality is something that we cannot ignore anymore. It's so obvious to us and that we're being challenged to kind of elevate our thinking about it mm -hmm. and what it is that we really want, not only for ourselves, but for humanity. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever felt in terms of like just being, 
I mean, this is an interesting way to, to pose it, but have you ever sensed, like, when you're in this space, because we all wind up going back and forth at certain times. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, do you feel a little bit heavier on right side versus left side, or is it not something that you feel like a balance like that? Like, oh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm very predominantly left-brained, and I say that for, for multiple reasons. For one reason, I'm, I... I am not, I, can I draw something? Sure. Can I, do I sing? Yeah. Do I enjoy dancing? It's one of my favorite things in the whole wide world and I hope to God I get a chance to do it That's again right. soon. I remember that, that dancing. That isn't yeah. just limited to my living room. That's um, very important for you. I it remember is. That, I love yeah. dancing. <laughs> um, but I say that I'm very left brain because I'm also very um, divine masculine mm -hmm. where I'm very external, very outward. Um, I like to know and understand things. I like to, uh, so I have, a, I have a hard time always just letting things just come into my awareness and just be. Uh -huh. I then have to go, I gotta know more about that. And I go on a research kick. <laughs> do, you do, do you do like uh, like Google searches and like, okay guys, listen, yep. Ian, come here, I need help. Oh yeah. So uh, you like get the full perspective, yes. that's awesome. Yeah. I, I, Cause I gotta, I gotta know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but, and, and, Ian is predominant is very divine masculine. So when I channel him, it's like sticking my finger to light socket, as you have experienced because you've had the opportunity to channel him. He's yep. he's wee. Yeah. Um, but he <laughs> is very outward, very external, very uh, um, electric. Yeah. Whereas yeah. the divine feminine is more magnetic. It's more. Um, I, I liken it to at least with Kuan Yin because her energy is a divine feminine energy and that's where I get some of my some of my balance. Okay. But her energy is softer. It's more emotional. It's it feels like water. Yeah. And so I know I have it. I have that aspect in me. But I feel, or at least I feel like I express myself predominantly left. More right. active within left. Yeah. Yeah. Even the fact that I'm talking with my hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I do so all the time. <laughs> I, uh, my balance actually comes from my relationship because I'm so heavy right brain. Mm -hmm. Um, and she always teases me that, you know, I can literally just go into a completely different space. It, it happens automatic. Yeah. And it's not that I'm not being present. I'm just so like within what's happening here. Yes. I'm just so present in where my world is like my little, it's basically heart space. You mm -hmm. know, it's like, I just like drift off into it and I, I'm not That's aware amazing. that I'm doing it. And she's like. <laughs> you know, come on back, come on back. Okay, exactly. Because yeah. she always wants to know everything. Like, what are you thinking about? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, totally. When you were telling me, when you were telling me left brain and how you were talking about it, I was like, oh, that's Nicole. Yeah. <laughs> that's very much how Nicole yeah. is. Um, so she, she is my balance. And yeah. it's funny because with, you know, she goes, you have all these guides. She's like, don't you have questions? I said, no. I said, I don't need to know anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, she goes, that just totally doesn't make any kind of sense to me because all she wants to do is know. Mm -hmm. The amount of times that she asks questions that uh, you were saying with Ian and uh, Quilin, uh, did I pronounce that right? Qua Quan, Quan Yin. Quan Yin. Quan Yin. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I don't know Quan Yin, but I have. Uh, oh, you should Google her. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I'm <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> I'll do, I'll do a quick Google Just search. Just do a quick Google search. <laughs> All right, did it. <laughs> or better yet, a duck, duck ghost. Yeah, search. Maybe exactly. Not, maybe not Google. Um, I have uh, an Oracle deck of Ascended Masters, and I used it briefly, like, early on. This is probably, like, six or seven years back, mm -hmm. uh, and she's part of that, but I've never really worked with her directly. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so just it's funny because she's like, you have all these guides. Like, don't you have questions? And I'm like, no, I really, I, you know, I don't, I, I don't need to know anything. Mm -hmm. And when I know I need to know something, I'll have it. Mm -hmm. um, so she always says with me, because uh, uh, Saint Germain is one of the masters that works with me directly. He's like my Ian for oh, you. Oh, sure, okay. Um, so she's always like, ask Saint G, ask Saint G. I got a question, ask Saint G about this. I'm like, listen, he's told you that he can work with you directly. You ask Saint Germain. Yeah, it's not like he's yours. Yeah, exactly. He's yeah, he not doesn't just belong yours. to me. It's no, like he's, Ian doesn't belong to me. He's either. working with everyone that's open to working yeah. with him. Uh, it's funny. I had to go through a certain like uh, challenge myself in breatharianism before he came to me, um, and going through that process and changing uh, on a very fundamental level all the cells within me mm -hmm. um on the third day he came to me and put like a crystal within my heart and he didn't speak to me the rest of the time after the 21st day was over he's like well done we're gonna work together now 
So I, I was like, oh, I didn't even know that wow. I was going to get like some sort of like special reward as a result of going through this, you know, this yeah. challenge for myself. I just knew I needed to do it for me. Yeah. But they're always watching. They're always looking. So when yes. they notice that you're doing something, they may choose to work with you. Mm -hmm. So I always joke with Nicole. I said, I had to not eat for 21 days and you just had to you know, talk to me and ask a lot of questions about St. Germain to get his permission to start working with them. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's funny how it ends up yes, working out. <laughs> but it's so funny because it's all a part of the plan. Yeah, exactly. We all agreed yep. about it, agreed upon it. And so that okay, you, you just you don't know, but you just opened up a whole <laughs> like I could probably sit and talk with you for hours and hours. Um, I knew that about us to begin with beforehand. So <laughs> yeah. <but. laughs> so uh, with the oh god, where do I want to start? There were so many things that came to mind when you were talking. <laughs> um, I will say when it comes to so you say you go you go into your heart space and you can just drift off. So for me, yeah. meditation is never a relaxing uh, thing. Yeah. Not, and in that, I can't just go into nowheresville yep. because anytime I sit quietly and I do my breath work, they're like. Fantastic! We're going to work with you now. Let's do something now. Yeah. And so they always start moving me. They drop. They move energy through me. They might mm -hmm. start speaking through me. So it's always for me a very active experience. But to me, that's that's the divine masculine. Yeah. It's a very active thing. Sure. As opposed to you, who's very creative. That's and and the fact that you can go into a very quiet space. You can go into a heart space, which is is. I want to say dark, but. Dark in terms of a womb, it's really hard when you're trying to describe like multidimensional yeah, metaphysical things. Words never do it justice. No, yeah. But it's like you're in a in a in a womb where it's dark, but in the darkness that's where they show you things. That's, that's how you see things. Exactly what it is. Yeah. I seep down literally when I when I look back on it after I come out, mm -hmm. I'm in a dark space and I have a dirt floor. Yeah. And there's nothing else. And that's when I start having some sort of active, uh, interactive experiences. Yeah. And I see very clearly, but it has to be within this dark womb first. Yeah. So when I close my eyes, even though they're doing things and they're moving my body and, and whatever, I see, and you know, obviously you close your eyes and it's dark, but that's yeah. when they start flashing colored lights, depending on what energy they're, they're moving through me. Um, wow. and that's about as <laughs> like, I'm not, you're much more, uh, uh, clairvoyant where I'm, clairvoyant but to a degree mm -hmm. where I can see the, the colors sometimes they'll they'll show me a mental image but it's more like I get like a knowing okay like yeah. I just know you know it yep. stuff yep. Um, which is claircognizance which is more masculine yeah um, sometimes I get when I say I have a feeling like I feel like blah blah, blah it's never Unless it's an emotion that I feel and I'm not working with someone and I go, I can feel somebody's anxiety or I can feel somebody's anger. When I am in a session, I say, I feel as though blah, 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 blah. Yeah. It's more like, um, it's not an emotion so much as an understanding. Like I have, I, I've been, it's I've been. knowing. Yes. Yeah, I get it. And yep, so that totally. again, to me is more divine masculine. Masculine, yeah. So I feel like I work in a more divine masculine way with my guides um, although I would like to open that up to be a little more balanced, mm -hmm. uh, whereas you work more in a divine feminine way with the, the visual and the emotion and the, yeah. and the, you know, it's, it's very palpable for you. It's very cool how like it winds up, it's, it's, it's amazing. I was reading, um, your website and just gathering some information, you know, starting off, uh, for our podcast. Oh yeah. Um, but seeing what it is that you do in terms of your feeling, you know, you like yeah. you, 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 you have some sort of knowledge that just comes to you yeah. and you can see it on some level and you can certainly feel it yeah. uh, and just how intense that can be. Mm -hmm. I, I do something similar in terms of, I, I connect with highest self yeah. of the person and the feelings and the images, and it is emotional. Mm -hmm. I have to tell people sometimes like, I move in strange ways, mm -hmm. um, it's like energy has to move through the body. Yeah, I, some, I get that too. You, uh, it's, yes. It's wild. Um, twitches. Yep, the, 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 twitches, twitches yep. All the sometimes, time. Like, mm -hmm. And it's weird. Like Sometimes like my head just goes down or I have to like shift up in like a weird position. Mm -hmm. And I have to let, like I'm still here when I'm doing it. I have to let them mm -hmm. know this is all normal. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it just happens and you just got to go with <laughs> it. But um, And I always say I, I'm like almost interpreting 
the the feeling mm -hmm. that I have because the feeling like I have to use words to communicate, right? Oh my god! Yeah. Yes. It's I I find it to be difficult because the, whenever I, I I hear some uh, healers are hearing words, and I was like, that's good on some level. And I think it's great. I mean, you know, it's mm -hmm. another piece of it. Mm -hmm. But if I didn't have, I, I don't hear words all the time. It's actually very uh, minimal. Mm -hmm. But the feeling, I know so much from the feeling alone. Mm -hmm. It's like an immediate understanding. Yes. So like when, you know, I asked my guides, like, why don't you speak to me the way that like I would speak to an or another human being? Yeah. Like, because you wouldn't get it as well. Yeah. It's like it, it you would think words would like, make it more specific no oh. the feeling and the visual together combined it's like you get the immediate impact of what this is about yeah. and now you have to interpret it in words to help explain it to someone else yes which is so. the hardest part i agree with you That's so when same. you say the feeling that you get is yours more of an emotion or is yours like just an understanding of something because for me it's an understanding i hope yes. i'm expressing that no right. yeah ab absolutely I'm, okay. I'm i'm just taking it in and you're it's it's both is what it winds up okay. being you, you use the word knowing, and knowing to me is such a fantastic word. Yeah. Um, knowledge is like one thing, but that's just like information. A knowing is like you've had the experience and there's no, it's truth for you. It becomes yes. truth for you. Yes, and so that's why I call it also an understanding. It's like I just understand that this is what the person did, said, yeah. felt. We, you know, it's because it's, it's like a, it's like a, I hate to use the word download because it's yeah. so no, 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 but But it's like an immediate like capsule of information yes. that's there for you and you, you have and it, I understand the yes it's like you get an understanding of the whole picture mm -hmm. and so I can know what a person's feeling is but in that moment I'm not feeling it I just understand I know what they're feeling yep. and I'll and I can say you know oh, you know you were feeling this way and thinking da 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 and you may have even said such and so and and it just comes as, as like like you said like a ball of all encompassing yep. knowing. That's exactly the it's way it knowing. is. And then I have to like like you said figure out how to put it into words because sometimes it's not as easily described. Yeah. And you have to go. Oh my God! How am I gonna put how do this I? into English words? <laughs> I I love that you say it because it's, honestly it's like with Nicole asking me so many questions. She's yeah. like my like my teacher. That's how I was at first too. I was like, I want to know everything. Every, yeah. She's like four, cause I'm, I'm, I'm so happy just to be in the womb, like you said. Yeah, yeah. And she's like, no, 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 we're doing some training today. And she's <laughs> like, awesome. I got this question, this question, this question, and you got to figure it out and you got to speak it back to me. Yeah. And it really is, it's like, that's the most difficult part. Is, yeah. You know, and even when I choose words, I sometimes get tapped. I li Saint Germain is on my right side. Mm -hmm. He's actually within body now, but I like for me to be able to be aware of who I'm working with directly. Sure. He always comes in through the right, mm -hmm. and he'll he'll tap me, mm -hmm. and he'll let me know. No, 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 different word. I'm like, okay, so I got to sit there and think for, because it's like it's close, but it's not gonna register for the person yes. if I don't find a different word for it. Yes, so. that's so funny. You get a tap. I yeah. get a feeling of I don't know how. To, I, I see. I have, now I have to put this feeling into words. <laughs> um, I get a feeling of, mm, and it's like, oh, yeah. I, if it's like a feeling of, of. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I God, it's really I get hard it. to put it into words, I, but yeah, and it's I, like, oh, I, that's clear. I I have to find another way to put this. Yeah. Sorry, they're telling me I'm not saying it right, but they're yeah. not telling me. Yeah. They're giving me that feeling of not all right, yep. try another word. Yeah, interpret a slightly different way and you'll get it. Yeah. It's so funny. And sometimes I have to ask for the words, but even then I'm it's only on rare occasions where I hear a voice in my head. Yeah. And and on even more rare occasions where it feels like a voice is J literally just inside my ear but it's like as if a human or a non-human yep. was right here <laughs> but their lips were just inside my ear canal yep. speaking and it's it, oh, that one takes me by surprise and it happens very very rarely but it happens but you uh, occasionally I'll hear and hear is not right because it's more like the the words are put into my mind and I hear it as like a thought like it feels like it sounds like my own thought yeah do you, I you, everything you're saying is exactly <laughs> what I experienced. Okay, good. So yeah, I totally get it. Yeah, so and I'm like, it, I don't know. You got to give me the words, you guys. I don't have a freaking yep. clue where you're going with this. It's and then so wild. They have to do my work for me. <laughs> we are literally just the, the experience of a human being. I mean, like, and what just, just being able to. I, I love that you're here. Con connecting <laughs> like this and like just sharing, you know, our insights with what it is that we've experienced and doing this kind of work. Mm -hmm. It just it makes me feel so good. And 
Yeah, just just thank way you. less like a alien. Existence. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. some like yeah. some weirdo. It's just kind of like I mean, I am a weirdo. I, oh yeah, we're all, weirdos. we're all weirdos. Yes, and we're owning it beautifully. Totally. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like, I, I wear I fly the flag proudly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I, I'm sure, like like me, it, it took some time to get to that spot where mm-hmm. you were willing to wave the flag mm-hmm. proudly. There's still aspects of of me that I'm still trying to get comfortable with, like public channeling. Yeah, that's like my next challenge if mm-hmm. I have to get. I have to start learning to be okay with what people are going to think of me yeah. as I'm either being filmed or voice recording because I'd like to start a podcast with yeah. me recording like a weekly message. Yeah. But I have to get comfortable with oh my god, people are yeah, going to hear my channel. Yeah. Oh my god. I, I what understand. Are people really I understand like the reservation in that because mm. it, it is another step. Like it really is like how when, for us to get into those spaces, right, and mm-hmm. do that kind of work. It's it's very vulnerable. Yes. You're, like you're just completely open. And and you're beautiful when you do it. So I really think you should do. Thank you. you definitely should put it out there. It <laughs> would be very beneficial high. for for the majority of people that are you know becoming more aware of what this is all about, mm-hmm. and that this energy is here not just you know for a certain you know group of people. It's yeah. for everybody. Yes. It's for all of us right now. Um, I said uh, recently that we're all being called to be masters. We're all being tested and challenged right now to be masters, and that's part of the polarity piece that you were talking about earlier. Yes. And we don't have to answer that call, but it's here right now, like a, a signal that's coming down our bodies, our brains, our hearts. Mm-hmm. They're transcoding the information and saying, hey, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? Yes. It's up to you. What do you want to do? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's an exciting and crazy time. And I, I, I saw a friend of mine that um, I remember this experience that we both shared looking up at the, the night sky and just looking at the stars uh-huh. and we just were geeking out mm-hmm. we were in one of those like giddy feelings and just vibing off of each other yeah yeah and it was like do you know how lucky we are mm-hmm. like you know this world can feel a little heavy and the life experience can can seem a little difficult mm-hmm. but ultimately it's the most beautiful space yeah. and we're so lucky to be able to have the experience so that's what i was feeling with you when you were just sharing it's oh, like, yeah. oh, i yeah, just like, feel so yeah. excited like this is great yes you know? and it's so it's so i'm glad you, you mentioned that because i hear so many uh star seeds saying mm. oh i hate to be here this sucks and i want to go home and blah, yeah. blah, blah, because they're having such a rough go of it but they forget i think or at least they, I, I think it's maybe not so much a forgetting so much as it is they're placing so much of their focus of them being a star seed, but every, everyone every is one a of star us seed. Is. Every single one of there us is yeah. no, yeah, there's no one on this planet who is not a star seed. It's there are only people who aren't yet aware of it. And yeah. so, you know, yeah. that's, that's one thing that I want to make sure people have we a firm a, understanding on. Beautiful. We made a choice to be here. <laughs> exactly. We made a conscious choice to be here. Yes, we all. And so the fact that we're here now as a human this is the incarnation we should be placing our focus on. Totally. Okay, well, you can be a Syrian Arcturian Pleiadian yeah, yeah, yeah. Andromedan, and we probably all are from every one of those places. Yep. I know I've got a combo lineage. <laughs> but the only reason we are being made aware of any of these lineages isn't so we could learn about who we were, because of course time doesn't exist, yeah. but so much as what Help then, yeah, how, what, <laughs> all, what gifts did we have in those lifetimes that we can use now as a human being? Oh, so don't don't look so much to I miss home. Blah, 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 blah. Get your that's a time waster. That's a yeah. distraction. That's a great way to get you to not live your your purpose yeah, for being here. here. Be look at I'm a friggin' human in this body in this time, yeah. and I chose to incarnate now because this is a time that I, my higher self did not want to miss uh, participating exactly. in. Exactly. So how can I use my gifts as a star seed? to move this ascension process forward. Yeah, how can I help it? Yes, that needs to be the focus. So get that pull. I, I love it. I don't want to hear. I think people that when they're first starting off and they, they learn about that, it's like they get super excited and they start investigating that. And yeah. you can get lost in it. And it's oh, great yes. it, It's great to be aware and to, I say it's like spiritual seeking, right? Yeah. It's really pushing hard to find and rediscover truth for you. Mm-hmm. And it's great, but you got to get out of it at some point. Exactly. Because you can get lost in that process thinking, oh, I need this. Oh, I got to go here and get that. Oh, I need this information to get this. Mm-hmm. It's all got a purpose, but remember what you are, like you said. Yes. We're human beings. We're here for a reason. I actually had part of this experience of, I just want to get the hell out of here. Mm-hmm. And and I remember going through it, and then there was an experience that I had in meditation where I felt 
clear as day. Mm -hmm. There is no other place for you to be. Yes. And once I got that message, I said, oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Thank you. Like, yeah. I really need to hear it the yeah. way that it was given to me. And yes. once I came out of that, it hasn't been an issue since. It's like, yeah, here we are. This is it. Yes. This is it right now. Yes. And we're so lucky to be here. Yeah, <laughs> like, we're here now in this time of the Great Awakening. Like, how yeah. freaking amazing is that? There are, exa <laughs> exactly. There are beings on, I'm, d d I know dimensions are, are different for different people, but mm -hmm. I understand, like, you know, a 12-dimension 12 12 dimension system. Mm -hmm. And there's beings within that system that I understand, 10th dimensional beings coming in to body here mm -hmm. the children that are here right now are not children from earth they're not you know reincarnating correct it's all from way out there saying do you guys know what we had the opportunity to be part of let's come yes. down here let's help the humans let's become them let's be part of this new uh e exciting uh expansion mm -hmm. and yeah are we are, are we all up for this and they're like hey let's do it and they keep coming they keep coming oh yeah so we have all these children here now that are like just out of this world like full literally of knowledge and uh, totally <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean everyone that i wind up working with and there's few children that i've worked with it's probably like a, a dozen mm -hmm. and they're all somewhere else mm -hmm. and they're like how are you like they're like talking to me like when we wind up connecting energy wise how are you doing can i help you with anything i'm like i thought i was here to help you yeah yeah no <laughs> it's like no 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 nope. i'm here to help you that sort of thing it's so wild yeah but yeah it's yeah. exciting it's fascinating um with uh, practice mm -hmm. because to, to do what it is that you do and mm -hmm. you know being a coach uh, and helping people heal mm -hmm. um, you have to take care of yourself as well mm -hmm. and that's exactly what, what I do too you know we all have to be cognizant of what we're going through to be as strong as possible for everyone else um, could you take us through maybe a few things that you might do one or two mm -hmm. things uh, sure. and we'll see how that could help people out there as well. Yeah. So I was guided to drink three liters of water a day. And I actually had it. So I, I, I get like my dad was a, a heavy water drinker and I got that from him. So I was drinking two liters of water a day. And then I had a dream where my mom came. And of course, it was the mother aspect of me. It was like me coming as my mom to mother myself. Yeah. And it was like, you, you need to drink three liter, three liters. And a year later, I couldn't get like two liters wasn't enough. I needed more water. Yeah. But I found that that helps keep, um, how do I want to say this? It keeps obviously me clear of toxins. That's kind of dirt. Sure, sure. But uh, energy, this is hard to describe. <laughs> when, when you channel energy and the energy is particularly high vibrational, your cells go yeah. and that, that can dehydrate you. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, cause it helps to, it, in that it helps to flush fluid out of your, you know, that, that energy going through your cells flushes fluid out of your system. And so you have to keep that in. And so sure. to stay hydrated helps you to, to channel more high vibrational energies, energies. Yeah. And it, most people are dehydrated anyway. Anyway, yeah. Typically so people aren't drinking drink, drink at least half water. your body weight in water in ounces yep. and you're golden, um, <laughs> preferably clean water and not fluoridated, chlorinated, mm -hmm. you know, recycled toilet flush um, <laughs> um and eat a lot of green stuff so i put in my in my first water of the day i buy uh i have a chlorophyll liquid okay and i put that in my water oh, and then i great. take um chlorella tablets okay and and then I, of course i have you know salads with dinner and things like that mm -hmm. um and i have a greens powder so i'm just <laughs> green stuff which also of course helps your heart because it's green so it works it helps sure. to open your heart um and f it, this one's going to be different for different people so i already know the answer for you <laughs> <laughs> um but you you either will need to ground yeah. or you need to if you're too grounded raise your energy up mm -hmm. so a some sort of grounding and or centering and so for you it's um ground 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 yeah I'm hyper grounded. I'm, they had to like, when I was first starting to work with them, I can't even explain to you the experience that I went through. Like it's a long story and it's super weird, but it was in a, in a nutshell. And that's kind of a, that was a pun <laughs> and I didn't mean for it to be a pun, but they literally had to crack me open like a nut, mm -hmm. uh, using breath work and all these other things because I was so grounded, but Ian is so high vibrational that it was like, get, up yeah, here get up. Yeah. vibrationally and so they're always saying 
you know, don't, don't bring earth energy up. You're too grounded. You go up and pull divine energy down and go like travel up that, like an elevator. That's beautiful way of explaining that. Yeah. That's fantastic. But for you, you, t- you have the opposite. to, yes. I always do that. I mean, I, this is what I, I always do this because I, my, my connection to shamanism is just what I've been taught through what I yeah. call Anna, which is the earth. Yes. So earth as Anna for me, I always go down. Yep. I like sink, like I just allow gravity to like push mm. me all the way in. Mm-hmm. And once I'm there, I have all this power and then I'm like, bing. Yes. <laughs> and then yes. I go up. So I have to take from below to bring up to yep. allow myself to feel balanced. Yeah. Where you're like the opposite of yeah, I have to bring it down and then anchor it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you have all that grounding. That's mm-hmm. so cool. It's such. But I'm a Capricorn, so I'm okay, already yeah. Earth energy anyway. Yep. So I'm Cancer, so you're wa- you're water. Yep, I'm water energy. But I work well with waters, um, Pisces and Cancer, mm-hmm. and so like all of my best friends are are usually Pisces because oh, okay, you know yeah. I they help slowly you know, the water works through the earth to slowly carve it out and help it change slowly Uh over time. Whereas the earth gives that, you know, without some sense of direction, when the earth gives the water direction, then the water just kind of spreads its energy everywhere. Yeah. And it doesn't go where it needs to go. So for earth with water, earth helps guide and steer the water to give it some sense of direction. So earth and water work really really well well together. together. That's beautifully put. Yeah. What a cool way of explaining it. That makes perfect sense. I learned that from a a Native American, um, it's like essentially the Native American Zodiac. It, okay. There's a book uh, that um, describes all of their, the Native American aspect version of, of astrology, and they go into that dynamic between all these the water signs and the yeah. earth signs and how they relate. And I read that and went, oh, yeah, that's yeah, so exactly that perfect, right. Yeah. It's, yeah. So I, I can't take credit for yeah, that. That's no. not my own. Well, it's beautiful nonetheless, so thanks for sharing. Yeah. Um, I, uh, being a Cancer, I attract Taurus. And Which is an Earth sign. Yeah, exactly. So sure. And it's so funny because all of my most um, uh, like intimate relationships have all been Taurus. Mm-hmm. And I'm not hunting, <laughs> but it always just, like, it just naturally attracts, and that's what winds up happening. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's beautiful because I... Had someone joke with me when I brought this up, you know, that all of my relationships have been Taurus. Like, you're the only person that can deal with Taurus. <laughs> Taurus can be pretty bullish, right? Mm-hmm. So it's, 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 it could be difficult depending on how they think about things. Mm-hmm. And cancer typically winds up being kind of more open and, and, and free with what it winds up being. So oh, it's yeah. like they work pretty well together. Yeah. Um, when you brought up water, uh, it's so funny. And I'm sitting here, as I'm listening to you, I'm trying to remember what took place last night. Uh, Nicole was asking me a question for St. Germain. Of course. And, yeah, of course. And it had, had to do about <laughs> water. And this is not what he said because it was very specific. And I, I'm sure I could grab it within a minute, but just to keep the th- conversation flowing, mm-hmm. it was basically water is like the life force. And it's intelligence. Oh, I'm so glad you <laughs> and, it's, it, and there was more to it, but it's basically like it not only feeds the physical, but it feeds the mental and the emotional. It holds all of the code within it, and it has a direct relationship with DNA. Yes. And basically, they just work together, almost like it's not even separate is how it felt when he was explaining it to me. Yes. And again, not in words, but in, in a feeling. Of course. Right? Uh, you are so right. So it's funny when you said that, once you started bringing up water and... Um, I had a someone that I knew that was giving me some advice when I was early on playing with my spiritual path. Sure. Um, said, give love to your water. And I said, I understand what that means, but I said, how do you do that? Like, mm-hmm. I, I get the concept, but explain, you know, practice-wise, how do you do it? Mm-hmm. And he said, write love, the word love, on your water. Mm-hmm. And since hearing that, I've seen this as, like, something that's given to a, a lot of, you know, a, a lot of people that are teaching yes. oh, I love are, are giving that, that information. Yeah. So uh, it's very important, uh, so water and I, giving love. You are <laughs> so it. right. I wish I'd have brought my water bottle in instead of my, my tea mug because <laughs> on all of my water bottles, I what I d- did was I designed something where I took, a uh, like, a... It's basically like a nebula, a, you know, those rainbow colored yeah. nebulas that yep. are just gorgeous. Sure. And it's a, uh, and you can look this up. It's one of those free images you can get online, but it's, it's the, it, it's that in an eternity symbol. Okay. Yep. And then I designed it where I have a little prayer where it says, I ask and intend that I be infused with the follow, following energies and whatever ways are for my highest and best good. And so Beautiful. it is. And then in either uh, circle, I have different things. So it would be like, you know, peace, love, joy, gratitude, um, 
abundance, prosperity. Yeah. Uh, I think I said activation and alignment. And you know, activation can be like activating any energetic aspects of me mm-hmm. that n- are ready or need to be activated for my highest and best good. That's yeah. kind of what that means. But I had that on all of my water bottles. That's fantastic. We <laughs> so should, that's so funny. Yeah. I'm like, I know where he's going. I know what he's going to say. <laughs> and that's like, it's such a great, it's just a simple practice. It's very personal. Yeah. You can write whatever you want. Yep. Just make it something that's from the heart and you know, you, you want for yourself, mm-hmm. whatever it wants up being, put it into your water. Mm-hmm. Water has that capability, that natural, um, uh, holding information yeah I, it's almost like it's like liquid crystal yep exactly yeah, really yeah, yeah. Yep. because like, quartz is, is the same thing it's designed to be programmed and you can put whatever bit of energetic information that's why it's used in computers yeah yeah it's, it's amazing. not a yeah, it's, you not, know. it's not a fluke thing <laughs> yeah, like they, why, they're fully aware of what it's capable it in our bodies yeah. um, it's why we wind up like, you know, people like us working with crystals on yeah, some level and yeah so uh there's uh incredible power there so speaking of that actually it being in our bodies and working with crystals and, and drinking the water uh, that brings up another thing that I, that's i've known but it's being kind of readdressed Whereas we need to be really mindful, and I'm talking to myself, <laughs> of what we say yeah. about ourselves. Yep, words. So how we about how we feel about what we think about what we look like about um, if we have a physical issue, do we then Im- are you giving that physical issue power? Yeah. Are you um, identifying with it? Are you making it something that is? you as opposed to a thing that you have are you then giving it power and strength to grow in your system or are you using your consciousness to let it be a uh let's say this let it be a a spiritual experience that you are having for the sake of spiritual growth and letting it just be a thing that you have that serves that purpose Mm -hmm. or are you allowing yourself to feel as though you are a victim of that thing and it is now you you own that thing you're holding it yes it's you identify with that thing you are that thing whatever you know whatever it is um and then also to be mindful of of and this was recently readdressed and i've heard it before numerous times but talking about your age mm. and like oh i feel old oh <laughs> yeah. i'm gonna be however old yes yeah, saying it that we way we are programmed totally programmed to yeah. age yeah. and if you hold that program and reinforce that program by celebrating your birthday every freaking year yeah. and celebrating the pat and, and acknowledging the passage of time which is an illusion it's not real it's all a construct <laughs> exactly you're reinforcing your your body's programming of i have to operate then within that that limited construct yeah but no, you don't. Yeah. You can then operate outside of that if you if you let go of that attachment to time and the passage of it, which is challenging yeah, sure. when you're surrounded Especially by people that go by the calendar and go by the clock. And, and it's, it's part of our way of life. It's part of society. It's very hard to break those patterns. It really is. And yeah, it's like it's like you said. It, it is a program, and yeah. it, I don't want people to get scared by that. But you're absolutely right. Like yeah. you cannot. You cannot acknowledge that it's not a pro. It's, it's yeah. so obvious, and we do wind up creating thought forms based on these mm-hmm. programs. And we age ourselves. We, we're programming our internal water as a result of the language yeah. that we use. Exactly. Um, and I've, I've, I, I use water in people that I'm working with to the water within their body mm-hmm. to help them get to where they want to be. Yeah. Um, just acknowledging that if we shift their perspective and uh, they can allow themselves to shift their thoughts about themselves, it's gonna completely impact their entire body yeah all their bodies you know yes. mental yes. emotional and, and so forth so it's, yeah. Yeah. it's a ripple effect on exactly levels. it's yeah. crazy um yeah i i think we'll end there right okay <laughs> then we'll just talk more off camera yeah well exactly <laughs> thank you so much for coming out this is a fantastic experience as i knew it would be yeah uh, and i would love for you to come back at some point if you're up for it oh, are you kidding i could talk to you yeah. for hours i absolutely awesome. i love it. I appreciate it love you so much thank you love for you being too here. thank you so much <laughs>